So Hector, you're the man they chose to tell their story. How did that happen? Oh, well, the uh, miners, while they were still trapped underground, had a meeting, decided that they would sell the book to one person. Uh, they reached out to some lawyers and tal agency, and I was recommended as someone who spoke Spanish and would be sensitive uh, to these working guys who had a story to tell. And what was it about this story that made you want to tell it? Uh, to me, this is the epic story of our times, the epic adventure story of our times. It's the modern day odyssey. It's these guys undergoing this adventure underground uh, for 69 days while the world watches, um, trying to reach home again. And it was a story of working guys uh, who uh, found themselves in an extremely difficult situation. But at the end of the day, there are many accounts many stories in this story. Yes. I was very interested in knowing how you managed to piece it together to write such a great book. Well, you know, uh, there were 33 stories of 33 men and their relatives and the rescuers, but it was my job to tell one story, uh, to tell it like an omniscient narrator, uh, to write it like a novel. And so that was my mission, was to think of my one eye uh, as a novelist, um, as a writer, and to tell the story the way Homer would have told it, the, the way a poet would have told it. And what part of that whole process did you enjoy the most? Was it um, doing the research, um, interviewing them, um, thinking how you would do it, actually writing it? You know, it was sitting down with each one of these guys. I mean, they were men who, when I first met them, were only a few months away from having been rescued. And they were still wrapped up in the wonder of it, in the strangeness of it. They had gone to work one day in this lousy place to work, really hot, humid, dusty, no one really wanted to work there, and they came out being world-famous miners, you know, the most famous miners on earth. Uh, they had survived hunger, they had been tortured by the noise of the mountain, and so they were just in awe of what had happened to them. And just to sit down with these guys who had an amazing story to tell, a lot of them were kind of broken, emotionally broken by what had happened to them. They cried in their first interviews with me. So just being sitting there with them, listening to them, uh, one right after the other, it was just an amazing experience. And how did that experience um, make you feel? What impressed you the most of what you heard? You know, I really, I, I realized that um, the love that we have in our lives is the best thing about us. You know, because these guys, they're trapped. For the first 17 days, they don't know if they're gonna get out. They're dying of hunger. They're sort of like in a coffin. And what do they think about? They don't think about the money they made in their lives, the number of homes they had, the women they slept with. They think about the good things that they did in their lives. The people who loved them, who made homes with them, the children they brought into the world, because that was really the best thing about them, and they, that's why they wanted to go home. And so for me, that was the lesson of this story. It's a story about guys who want to go home, and these women who love them even though they're knuckleheads. You know, they're these guys, they're flawed, they drink too much, uh, they're angry, um, they're tough guys, they're knuckleheads, but these women, they want them home. And so that to me was the, you know, the, the sort of lesson of the story for me. So you wrote the book Deep Down Dark, and then you were approached uh, about the movie. Um, how did that happen, and what were your concerns? Well, we were working together from the very beginning. As I was writing the book, I was sharing my pages uh, with the filmmakers. Uh, this is a very unique thing. We were both doing the book and the movie at the same time. I did many interviews with a screenwriter or a producer present, worked with a director also. So it was wonderful to see the way in which these extremely talented filmmakers were going to take this complicated story, the story that I was learning and they were learning at the same time, and bring it to film. It was an incredible challenge, uh, but I think they did a wonderful job. How was your relationship with uh, producer Mike Medavoitz really being the driving force in, to make this film, and uh, director Patricia Riggan? This is Mike Medavoy's love poem to Chile. Mike Medavoy grew up as a teenager, as an adolescent in Chile, not many people know that. He's fluent in Spanish, and he wanted to make this movie because he wanted to leave a tribute to this country uh, that had brought him so much. Uh, he is a wonderful man, a mensch, uh, dedicated. He fought for this movie to get it done. A lot of people told him it would be impossible to get this movie done, uh, but he fought for it and he got it done. And Patricia? Uh, Patricia is a wonderful director, uh, an incredible talent, uh, brought a lot of passion and energy to the project, and I totally enjoyed working with her. Then there's that moment when you sit down and when you watch the final result. Oh, yes. What did you think? I thought it was a beautiful work of art. I thought it was really true. Uh, to the experience of the 33 men underground and of their families on the surface. 
uh, it's a love story, uh, the way the book is and the way the story that I heard, sitting down with those men, that's the story that I heard. Um, I thought it, um, it just did a really great job of capturing um, the claustrophobia of being trapped underground. And I know that speaking with many of the miners, uh, they wept when they saw it. Uh, for them, it was transported them back to the, to the mine. And I think that's the greatest tribute you could give to the movie, uh, is that it, it really made the miners feel um, that their lives were being represented on the screen. Being such a unique process where the script is being, write, being written, while the book is being written, while the movie is being tried to make, made, while these people are struggling to get out of there, all of this is happening and the whole world is watching. Um, <clears throat> I was just curious to know, um, well, how do you feel now that you've been a, a, such an important part of all of that? Oh, well, to me, this was the great project of my life uh, as a journalist. Uh, you know, I've been a reporter for 25 years and written a few books, uh, but to be at the center uh, as a storyteller of this event, this worldwide event that was witnessed by 1.2 billion people, but lived really intimately by 33 guys who suffered together as a brotherhood, um, that was, it was just an amazing process. And now to see it finally come to the screen with Antonio Banderas in the lead and this wonderful international cast, uh, it's just really been a wonderful, uh, a wonderful journey in itself. And it's a very entertaining also movie to watch. Um, I was talking with Patricia about that and with the producer, with, with the actors. This could have been a tragic, just a tragic story, but like life, there's humor. And we see it in your book, we see it in the movie. Uh, it's entertaining and, and because we know how it's gonna end. Nevertheless, we're on the edge of our seat watching it. How important was you that, that this movie, like life, has all those emotions? Well, I think that people want to see stories, they want to read stories about real people. And we know that real people are not just victims, real people are not tragedies. Real people uh, come into an event like this with all sorts of strength. They laugh their way through it, they cry their way through it. Uh, Mario Sepulveda told jokes underground in real life to get him himself and his brothers through this event. I think uh, humor, life, the complications of family, all of that never left these 33 guys. They were trapped in a mine, they became worldwide heroes, but they were still dads, they were still sons, they were still lovers. Uh, they still had all these complications in their lives, and that's part of what makes the story feel real, I think.